no one knows what they want to do in high school. They may think they want to know, but I kind of thought I wanted to do medicine and nothing really derailed me, so I ended up in medical school. I got a scholarship through the Air Force. Once I finished my residency, I spent four and a half or five years in the Air Force doing general and trauma surgery for them, so that's kind of where I got my background. You know, four years of undergrad, four years of medical school, you know, five or six years of residency, and suddenly I'm a general and trauma surgeon. Once I separated from the Air Force, my wife and I wanted to come back to Indiana. We moved to Pendleton, and it turns out one of my neighbors was a police officer. He was on the SWAT team, and they had been operating for a significant period of time without any real medical backup. Eventually, uh, I, I started teaching them combat first aid, and then I ended up going through the police academy class that enabled me to become a reserve police officer. And then, you know, I've been doing it now for 15 years. <laughs> To have a, a doctor, you know, within seconds, if something major happens, I mean, that's, I know there's a lot of other departments throughout the country that are very jealous of us. When it gets really bad, that's when they call us. So you know, hostage situations, active shooter situations, people who are known to be violent and have weapons and that kind of stuff, that's when we go out. As a law enforcement officer, it should give you the confidence when you have all the tools that you need. When I started, there was really no medical kit. So I went to the Community Hospital Foundation and said, hey, we need some medical stuff. And they basically said, give me your dream list. Uh, much to my surprise and, and, and very generous of the uh, foundation, they, they checked off every box on the list. So we, from a medical standpoint, we've been fairly well equipped ever since. Everything that we, we teach and what we're trying to do are, are to combat immediately life-threatening injuries that are correctable. We've got all the equipment in a little tiny kit like this that we wear in our armor that we can get to very quickly and, and prevent all those things. I'm extremely appreciative of it for the fact that the community sees a need and without hesitation steps up and says, hey, we're gonna help you with this need. When the foundation got involved, not only did we have the proper individual kits, but we had above and beyond that, and, and I, I would say we were probably the best medically supplied SWAT team easily in the state, if not you know even nationwide, because we had everything we needed. It's extremely important to be able to have community relationships, because the only way we're going to be able to get better and be able to get stuff accomplished is team effort. To be able to help provide a safe environment for the police officers to keep my town safe. I don't get paid, I've never been paid a penny. This is where my wife shops, this is where my kids went to school, this is my home. 